Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna do kind of an overview of conjunctivitis and the various etiologies behind it. Um, this is a little bit more like a pathophys video because we're gonna go through kind of what the condition is. Um, but I believe that Dr. Hartley is also making kind of her own videos and notes that will go along with this. Okay, so what is conjunctivitis? So conjunctivitis literally just means inflammation of the conjunctiva. Now, as you guys know, I'm no anatomist. Um, um, when it comes to the eye, you should to talk to Dr. Wilson or Dr. Hepner regarding the conjunctiva. Um, but really, when we're thinking about the conjunctiva, we're thinking about this generally transparent um, area of the eye. So over here and down here on both sides, um, it's generally transparent, but when it's inflamed, it can look pink or red. So really, what are we talking about? pink eye, one of those dreaded conditions of parents everywhere um, because it's highly infectious when it's of an infectious etiology. Um, one of the things that I think is really important to keep track of that we're going to talk about a good bit, I think, in your session activity is that all conjunctivitis has a pink or a red eye but not all red eyes are conjunctivitis. There are other conditions that I think pathophys is gonna spend a little bit more time talking about that are not conjunctivitis that could be more serious than many cases of conjunctivitis that may also have this red eye presentation. So you can't assume that they're all the same. Um, conjunctivitis is really common. It's a common patient complaint. Most often you've got a red eye and discharge um, and it can look kind of pink from the distance. Um, if you were to examine it, you could see kind of the blood vessels um, below the fine vessels termed injection. Um, and these are kind of different from the extravasated blood, which is seen in subconjunctival hemorrhage, um, which is a totally different condition altogether. Um, often conjunctivitis is referred to as acute conjunctivitis to differentiate it from some more classical or uh, chronic forms. And when we talk about conjunctivitis, we're kind of talking about two categories. Categories. Is it infectious conjunctivitis or non-infectious conjunctivitis? Okay, so let's talk about the ways we get conjunctivitis. Um, the prevalence of each of the types of conjunctivitis versus pediatric and adult populations is different. Um, bacterial conjunctivitis, which is one of our infectious conjunctivitis, uh, etiologies is more common in children than adults. However, viral conjunctivitis, another infectious um, conjunctivitis form, is kind of more common just in general. Okay, so everybody is more likely to have viral conjunctivitis than bacterial conjunctivitis. If it is bacterial conjunctivitis, though, it's more likely to be a child. I hope that makes sense. Okay, but there are some non-infectious forms. So let's think of it this way. You've got bacterial and viral, which are infectious. You've got allergic, which is not infectious. Then you've got something that's altogether different. It's non-infectious and non-allergic. We're just gonna talk about this here because really it's just kind of its own thing. Um, it's not related to either the inflammatory infectious process. The discharge is more likely to be mucus than pus. Um, it's usually transient and due to like a mechanical or chemical insult, i.e. you got something in your eye and your eye didn't like it. Um, maybe you scratched uh, the conjunctiva when you were itching something and now you've got kind of this mucusy discharge for a day or two. Um, patients with dry eye, um, which is a totally different condition, might report chronic or intermittent redness and discharge. Um, and you might interpret those as being part of an infectious cause, but typically they'll just resolve kind of spontaneously on their own within 24 hours if it's just a chemical or mechanical insult that's leading to the conjunctivitis in this case. So let's talk about the ones that might not resolve so quickly. Okay, so allergic conjunctivitis. Much like most allergies, this is due to, you guessed it, an allergen. And in this case, it's typically an airborne allergen that is contacting the surface of the eye. Um, so you walk through a beautiful field of flowers and, you know, tree pollen and um, flower pollen gets in your eye. And then what happens is just like in your lungs or anywhere else, you have a specific IgE mediated response, okay? And what happens is basically you have this IgE that's already on your mast cell. So it's kind of already armed, it binds its antigen, 
the mast cell releases histamine, um, other eosinophilic chemotactic factors, so basically it degranulates, um, you get platelet activating factors, among a whole bunch of others, and what happens is you get itching, um, and you get production of prostaglandins, tryptase, heparin, and that's going to lead to basically that um, swollen feeling, right? Because that's going to lead to there being um, leakiness in the vasculature, which allows fluid to come in, um, vasodilation, that also helps with the redness over here, and like I said, that itching, which is kind of the main um, characterization. So patients who have allergic conjunctivitis, it's going to typically be bilateral. You're going to have redness and it's a watery discharge. And the most um, kind of complete definition is just this burning, itching um, feeling or irritation. Um, it's itching more than burning. Burning is more associated with viral. So it's really just that you're itching very badly. Um, so patients with allergic conjunctivitis often have the, have a history of atopy, which makes sense, right? If you have allergies in one spot, you might have allergies in another. So seasonal allergies are really common with allergic conjunctivitis. Um, and you can kind of get this diffuse follicular appearance here in the tarsal conjunctiva. Okay, let's move on to viral conjunctivitis. This is the first of the infectious conjunctivitis um, conditions that we're going to talk about. Most common um, culprit, but not the only culprit, obviously, is caused by adenovirus. Um, and there are a whole bunch of different stereotypes of adenovirus that have been implicated, which you don't really need to memorize. You learned about adenovirus as a virus back in host defense host response in your Katie Diaz case, um, which was um, basically where we talked about Epstein-Barr virus. So we talked about a lot of different viruses there, and adenovirus is one of them. Adenovirus is a DNA virus. Um, there's also a sketchy video on adenoviruses, so you can check that out. Um, so basically, the conjunctivitis, when we talk about viral conjunctivitis, may be part of a viral prodrome, followed by some systemic symptoms. So fever, um, malaise, uh, myalgia, arthralgia, things like that. Anything that you would expect to have with a really bad cold, you can also expect to potentially see with viral conjunctivitis. However, sometimes all you get is the eye and you know, that's annoying, but I'd count yourself lucky. Um, like the other infectious viral conjunctivitis, this or um, infectious conjunctivitis, this one is highly contagious. Um, so it's spread by direct content, contact with the patient's secretions, and guess what? Their eye irritates them, so they're rubbing it. So you've got an opportunity to have contact with those secretions all of the time. Um, contaminated objects and surfaces are other places where patients might pick up um, this particular um, organism. So with this case, you're going to have this watery or mucocerous discharge. So you can see it's still kind of watery. We're not seeing anything like globular or funny colors here, um, which kind of is another way to think of it. Remember, we're going to have this burning feeling with viral conjunctivitis, maybe sandy or gritty, but more burning. So you've gone past itching into burning. Um, the great thing is it's typically self-limited. You don't need to give eye drops or anything. Um, no treatment is typically necessary. It runs about the same course as a common cold, one to two weeks. Um, there is kind of one exception where we might need to be a little bit more alarming, and that's epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. Um, conjunctivitis. Um, this is a particularly fulminant form of keratitis or inflammation of the cornea, um, which happens in addition to conjunctivitis. It's most often caused by a couple adenovirus serotypes, particularly 8, 19, and 37. Um, keratitis, the reason why this is more important is that keratitis is potentially vision threatening. And these patients should be referred to an ophthalmologist very quickly to confirm the diagnosis and decide if they need to do anything else like glucocorticoids to kind of control the infection. Okay, last but, um, and probably least, is bacterial conjunctivitis. Like I said before, this one is less common. Um, that doesn't mean we don't ever see it, we just see it less than viral conjunctivitis. In fact, most of the time when you go to treat bacterial conjunctivitis, you're actually probably treating viral conjunctivitis. It's, pr it's that, um, less likely to happen. Um, but when it does happen, the main culprits are our friend Staph aureus again, um, strep pneumo, H flu, and Moraxella cardiharlis. Um, 
staph aureus is the most common cause in adults, while all of the others we're more likely to see in children. Um, it's spread once again by contact with the patient's secretions or from contaminated objects and surfaces. Um, it is highly contagious. And kind of the classical presentation of bacterial conjunctivitis is your eyes are stuck shut. So basically you go to wake up in the morning and the eye is completely just glued stuck after sleeping. And it's because the discharge for bacterial conjunctivitis is this purulent, gluey, thick discharge, um, thick globular. It might be yellow, white, green. It turns all sorts of fun colors. That is normally a good indicator of bacterial infection, kind of like when we were talking about um, upper respiratory infections earlier in host defense that, you know, um, I love to look at mucus because mucus tells you a lot. You blow your nose and it's a nice clear color that's either allergic or viral. If it's all sorts of funny colors, you might be fighting off some sort of bacterial infection. And we can kind of see the same in the eye here. Um, and that's what's going to differ it from viral or allergic conjunctivitis. Um, on exam, patients with bacterial conjunctivitis do have this more purulent discharge and it's going to be also at the lid margins and in the corners of the eye um, and if you kind of wipe it away it comes right back um, you're going to do antibiotic treatment for this just kind of eye drops um, and just kind of a quick note um, I don't talk about trachoma specifically in this video there is a separate video for that one um, but that's actually a bacterial conjunctivitis that leads to blindness Okay, so with conjunctivitis, you've got four types. You've got um, allergic, which is basically IgE. Let's see if I can write this out without my pen. You've got bacterial, which is here. You've got viral, which we talked about before. And then you've got one that's basically conjunctivitis because you got something stuck in your eye. And that's a non-infectious, non-allergic conjunctivitis. They each have kind of different presentations based on basically their discharge, okay, and their timeline. So keep those in mind. Thanks for watching.